It's not a burial song. It's your name in all the earth, oh Lord, our exile. It's your name, praise God. Hallelujah. All right, talk to the Lord. Say, Father, talk to me today. <coughs> in this class, reveal uncommon mysteries to me. <coughs> talk to him now. Lay brasotus, grasoto prete. Mantala Ibaradia, Grasoto Pretis, Grandolo Boko Sakata, Brad Deli Boko Sakata, Koro do Boko Sakata, Masoto, Masata Prati Bosetias. Hallelujah. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you. We give you all the glory, the maker of the heavens and the earth and the seas and everything that in them is. Lord, unto you are we gathered, reveal secrets to us. May our hearts induct a good matter. Take all the glory, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for the utterance, in Jesus' name. Champions, shout fire. Fire. Shout ururu. Shout fire. Fire. Shout ururu. Shout muzuzu. Shout mafuta. Amen and amen. amen. <coughs> I want to thank the person of the Holy Spirit for the privilege Amen. to be here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And also want to thank our most highly esteemed Papa Joshua Aguila. Amen. Say we love you, Papa. Love you, Papa. Amen. You don't seem to be excited for our Papa. You know, if our Papa tells us not to hold these classes, we will not hold it. Say we love you, Papa. We love you, Papa. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. You know, we've been teaching us on the operational codes of witchcraft. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Just that last class, we decided to just show you something yes. concerning witchcraft operations. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we told you about the the five decrees yes. Yes, sir. of the Abrameli witchcraft. Yes, sir. We said there are five kinds of witchcraft you have yes. the the white witchcraft, the black witchcraft, the Kali witchcraft, the Abrameli or Rajo witchcraft. Now if you say Abrameli, if you just say it that way, you are not addressing the thing. Like we said, in these classes, let's avoid making mistakes or there are certain things you can't abbreviate. See, it is only in the church uh, that we do a, a lot of things because of the liberty of the spirit. God has given us some, some Christians use it carelessly. You can't just say Abrameli. No, you say the Abrameli witchcraft. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You can't just, you can't just say um, Kali, Kali witchcraft. <clears throat> they know which one is which. So you can't just abbreviate certain things. Now you need to understand, Christianity, everything about Christianity is metaphysical. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Heaven is a metaphysical place. It yes, is beyond the natural. Yes, sir. Everything we learn in Christianity is metaphysical. What is metaphysical? Beyond. Something that is beyond the natural. That's just what metaphysics. Meta means, M-E-T-A, meta means beyond. 
Physical means what? Natural. Yeah. Beyond the natural. But what we're doing now is to take a step further. There are many heights in spiritual operations. And you need to take these classes seriously because the real battles are not fought in church. They are fought outside the church walls. Yes, sir. Because we meet people every day. Now, remember, how many of you can remember uh, the list of the 10 operational codes? At least for the benefit of our precious sister that is joining us, let's list them. The first one is what? Double Slayer of Destiny. Destiny. That's the first operational code. Yes, Double now, when we say operational code, who can tell us what we mean by that? Operational code of witchcraft. You don't know what operational code of witchcraft means. We say these are, these are, these are platforms that witches use to launch an attack on their victims, and it is universal. They are just ten. Worldwide, be it village witchcraft, be it the civilized, whichever, be it occultic centers. Now, <clears throat> again, we, just to refresh us for the sake of our sister that is joining us, witchcraft is not a separate entity from an occultic group. Yeah. That's one thing people don't know. Witchcraft is the Amalgamation is the coming together of all forces of darkness, yeah. be it occult, be it fraternity, be it secret society. Be it, it is a coming together of all of them together to join resources together to launch an attack. That's what is called witchcraft. Now, what some Christians don't know, a lot of Christians don't know this, they think that witchcraft they think that witchcraft, witchcraft is different from marine spirits, is different from uh, occultic, occultic spirit or groups and groups, um, secret societies. and all that, fraternities. Now, this, we said, all the forces of darkness, be it, which, be it, be it marine spirits, occultic spirits, so secret societies, fraternities, psychic spirits, all of them together, when they all join resources together, they, they form an operation called witchcraft. So witchcraft is not a separate entity as some people think. It is actually all the forces of darkness joining resources together. Do you understand, ma? Okay. So we're, we're refreshing you, ma. We're refreshing you, but they already know. Of, okay. Now, there are 400,000 kinds 400,000 kinds, 400,000 kinds of evil spirits. 400,000 kinds. And each kind of evil spirit runs in the millions. Yes. So there are 400,000 kinds. Now, I think one of the things we also do is, um, we'll talk to Sister Lois to do to replicate the same handouts that you guys already have so that we can give it to our sister. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yeah. So that we'll, we'll replicate. You see everything that we've taught over, over a period. Now, there's what you call witchcraft pool. Witchcraft pool. Like you have swimming pool. Witchcraft pool. Now, the witchcraft pool is where all the forces of darkness, these 400 kinds, all of them together, putting all their resources together, 
all the resources they pull to get they put together is what is referred to as witchcraft pool. Yes, then they appoint certain spirits to manage this pool. Yes, Those spirits are the ones called witchcraft spirits. You understand, madam? Just like the way you want to do a building project, you appoint some certain people to manage the project. Yes. So the forces of darkness appoint certain spirits to be in charge of these resources that all the forces of darkness have contributed, including money and everything, both spirits and human agents. Now, these witchcraft spirits, they, because of the nature of the attack and who they want to attack, they now determine which of the five kinds of witchcraft they will use to carry out the attack. Do you understand? So you see, what people don't understand is that they think that the forces of darkness are disorganized. They are well organized, well organized. So you may see a large house here. You may see another one uh, uh, down two blocks away. And you may think that they are two, doing two separate things. They are all working together. They are all working together. Now, we said there are five, there are three types of strongholds. Some people don't understand what we mean by strongholds. But you, you see all those things in the handouts. There are <clears throat> three strongholds of darkness. You have the absolute stronghold, absolute, absolute occult, occult stronghold. Did we say occultic or occult stronghold? Then you have what? Main occult, occult stronghold. Then you have what? Sub occult, occult stronghold. Then we say strongholds can be anything. It can be an yeah. altar. It can be a place. It can be. It can even be a person. Yeah. It can be a building. But the absolute stronghold is the most dangerous because this is where you have the five seals of witchcraft. The five seals. What's the first one again? You have the Delvic, Delvic seal. Delvic seal what? Three, three, three. The second one is what? Hmm? The second one is what? Huh? Please answer us now. Carl Seal. Six, six, six. And then the third one is what? The destructive seal. You are, it's like you are trying to hold the information. Meanwhile, we're the ones who taught you. Number three is what? Which is what? Nine, nine, nine. nine. And then we said you have what? Two, there are two levels to it. You have the what? The, the upper, the upper aspect, the upper aspect, and then the what? The lower, the lower aspect. The upper aspect is what? Liba, Liba what? Liba, Liba what? O. O seven. And the lower one is what? Liba. Liba Omega. Wait first. Liba Omega or Liba Omega seven seven seven. Okay. And you have the word. And we said some secret societies who use the lower Liba Omega 777. We said once that secret society has this seal, they can't move beyond the seal. Yes. Yes, right? Yes, sir. Amen, now. Amen. Amen, yes, sir. Then we said you have the word, the fourth seal. 
The code name for the fourth seal is what? Code name terrestrial seal. Terrestrial seal. Terrestrial seal 1330. Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. Hmm? Yeah, that's another name for it too. What's it called? Which also known as the Bavera seal. Please answer us now. What is it called? Spell it now. You are acting this way. Meanwhile, we taught you. B A dash V A R A Bavera seal. Okay. So you they either call it what the terrestrial sea or the Bavera sea. Okay. Then number five. Tuza. Tuza Otuma. Which is what? That's the fifth seal. Yes, and this is the highest. Yes. Now, one thing you didn't do, we said the ones, the people who control, who have this seal, the Devic seal, three, 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 how many spirits do they have access to? 40,000. Oh, yes. No, there are 400,000 kinds. Yes, yes. Okay, but this particular occult or secret society seal control how many kinds of spirit? Forty thousand spirits. Forty thousand yeah? kinds of evil spirits. Yes, they control. Then the 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 calf seal controls what? Control one hundred and sixty thousand. A hundred and sixty thousand. Yes. The destructive seal controls how many? You don't know? Yes. To how many? To 60,000. Yeah, 60,000. This one controls what? No, 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 that's 40,000. No, this one, we said 10. No, I'm so sorry. 10,000 degrees of psychic operations. 10 degrees of psychic operations with access to 40,000 spirits, yeah. They can control, they can control 40,000 spirits. Okay. The car is they, they are operated at the 30 degrees. We're talking about heavenlies. Yes. There are le levels in the heavenlies. When we say degrees, we mean, see, like now, a plane can fly 10,000 degrees. Yes. 30,000 degrees. Yes. At that 10,000 degrees, there are sp the Devic Sea can move at that wavelength. Yes. But have access to 40,000 okay. spirits. Who are in that level, yes. and the higher they go, but then um, the destructive sea. What did you say they operate? They go up to sixty thousand degrees. Sixty thousand degrees. Yes, but they have access to what? It can't be sixty thousand forces. You didn't get. It. See now, and you say you know everything. Now we're waiting for you. We taught you now. These ones operate at 60,000 degrees and then have access to over a hundred and something spirits. The Tuza Otoma. For what? They have access. The Tuza Otoma has access. Yeah, we're talking about the fourth scene now. You're talking about Tuza Otoma. Tuza Otoma controls everything. Yes. Wow. All right. So go and read your notes again. So why should we continue now? So you don't even know some of these things now. Anyway, Ma, you will get the handout. They will get it for you so that you can see all these things. You understand? So that uh, this way, this helps us know why our Christianity is not a joke. And this also brings us into an understanding that somebody cannot just call themselves a pastor. Say so because you went to Bible college and what did they teach you how to preach, how to communicate? No, did they teach you how to fight battles? Because you need to know your enemy. You need to know who you are fighting. And these are operations of darkness. 
Now, this just belongs to the absolute sea. They control the main and the sub occult strongholds. Now, here, we also, in the course of teaching, we, we said that is what you call, hmm, we had taken time to talk about f five women or three women yeah. that only made it to the fifth sea because in the occult, they don't really let women rise. So there's even gender inequality in, <laughs> in the witchcraft operations. But that only three women primarily have really made it to the fifth sea. But when they get to the third sea, the upper level, there are a lot of manipulations. The men, they try to dominate to see that. So only in the, in the history of mankind, only three women have really made it to the fifth sea. And they were given special assignments to do. Uh, so there were few women who also made it to the fourth seal, but they couldn't make it to the fifth seal, only few. Now, we said, we had taught them that those in the fourth seal mm -hmm. and in the fifth seal, they like to come down here yeah, yeah. to the lower aspect of the third seal and operate as though they are in the lower level. So there are some people who, are, who claim to be members of the uh, lower level aspect of LIBA 007 and they can be under a grand master in this occult seal, but they are, their real level is either the fourth and the fifth. And by that estimation, they can even destroy a grandmaster here. But they like to, uh, they are humble. Let me, let's, let's use the word. Well, we can't really use the word humble for them, but that's just the best way they describe. They like to operate here because a lot of assignments go on in the lower aspects. So they like to run errands. So they can be under a grandmaster and say, what do you want me to do? But they, they are higher than even the grandmaster. And we, and we took time to explain that sometimes, you know, today the arrogance you find in Christianity where somebody can say because he knows a lot of scriptures than the pastor, he's higher. And of course, God is showing the member things. So which means, of a truth, the member is rising. And, and, and I won't lie, I used to be like that, where I used to challenge my pastors many, many years ago. But it wasn't helping me until the Lord said, because I show you things doesn't mean that. See, because you can be in the fifth, in the fourth seal and in the fifth seal, in the occult, which these are higher levels. You have access to millions of spirits, but they still come to this lower aspect and remain humble and be submissive. But when higher operations, we told you, we gave you an example of one in Bessa, yes. in the university where I graduated from, yes, sir. Yes. because my campus was in a village. And yes. amen. Now, Uncle Ade, yes. remember we told you that yes. story? Yes. How somebody wanted to join the Aborigines. Yes. And they, normally, if somebody wants to join the Aborigines, which is the crude occult, oh, the Aborigines is also known as the Obunin Society, so, but the crude form. And how someone wanted to. Uh, yeah, Uncle Ade. Remember, when in the university I graduated with, how we said some people in the Ori Ava, if somebody wants to join the Aborigines, um, they will convert the person into an animal for seven days. Then they will transform the person back after seven days. Then they initiate the person. Yes. So um, there was somebody who wanted to join the Aborigines, and um, they turned him into a monkey. They can turn the person into any animal. So. Uh, seven days came, it was not time to turn the person back into a human being, but while the transformation was taking place, it got to the, uh, the waste level. Yes. And it was not difficult. Because the, the, trans the transformation takes place from downwards, upwards. And so it's like the thing was not working again. And the longer they stay, the more dangerous for the person because the person can die. And Uncle Ade was the head of that 
uh, Occult group, which was more or less uh, a group of native doctors. And Uncle Ade was somebody we knew, yeah. because but he was a good friend to my roommates. Mm -hmm. And um, so what they had to do was to go to the next village, to go and look for a higher, uh, a senior who could yeah. help. Amen. Now, why are you looking? Yeah, We've told you the story before yeah, now. Yeah, and so when they got to the senior, the, the senior said, no, why are you coming to me? There is a, the highest mm -hmm. boss mm -hmm. who has the talent to solve complex problems like this is even behind your house. Yes. You know, because they said, who? Me? There's nobody I don't know. There's nobody in the old court here in my town that I don't know. At least I'm the head there. He said there's one you don't even know. We, he's, a, he's the most senior, but you don't know. He said, who? So he said, there's one in Bedside by your door, by your house, at your backyard. He said, wait, which in Bedside? He said, Uncle Adena began to describe the in He said, that guy that I see, he said, say, yes, now, he's the most senior. Uncle Adena said, somebody that we even, sometimes we give him one, Nera, my children, the children play with him, they laugh. He said, yes, that's the guy. That's the most senior. Ah, that guy is not ordinary. That's the most senior. So certainly that guy must have been operating in the Tuzautuma or in the Terrestrial. Yes. But he was a senior, yes. powerful senior. He said, go and meet him. He said, wonderful. And came and meet, met He met that guy that night and began to beg him. He said, I didn't know you are a senior, this and that. The investor was looking at him, telling him, why are you coming to me? I don't know you, this and that. I'm only a beggar. He said, sir, I know you very well. He started healing him. Because that senior, the uncle Ade ran to, had told him, this is what you give him and all that. So finally, he, he obliged. He said, but you see me, you treat me as though I'm nothing. He said, sir, please forgive me. I did not know. Ah. I didn't, he said, you don't know I run the whole region. Hey. Yes, so that's how he came. He looked at the, they not drove him to the place where the guy is. When he walked in, he said, ah, this one is nothing now. Nah. He, he just said, do this, do this, mix this, do it, and pour it on him. When they poured it on him, the guy just became full. They all prostrated, started healing them. And we, we said there's a lesson to learn that even in ministry, those of us in Christ, you must learn to know your senior. You must learn because seniority is not by who can preach. Yeah. It's about manifestations. Yeah. You understand? We told you how one pastor said that he's higher. And I looked at him and I said, no problem. And I said, bend that tree. You see that tree? We were looking, we told you how, we said, look at that tree, use your eyes to bend it. He said, no, you don't put God to test. I said, I want to test God. And I began to look at the tree, and the tree began to bend. Then he called me an occult. I said, if occultic powers are stronger than God, then Christians are doomed. So you don't believe now God can empower my eyes to bend a tree. But you claim, you think preaching the Bible is what makes you a senior. I said, even the Bible says, I know mysteries more than you. He said, but you have never been able to finish the Bible. I said, I've, I can't finish the Bible. I said, because I can preach on a verse for 10 years, one verse for 10 years. I said, if you think finishing the Bible is what makes you spiritually mature, you are crazy. So the point here is that there's a lesson to even learn here. Yes, sir. That those operating in the highest levels in the occult, they come down here and play like every other person, but they are the most dangerous. Like we, that's why I'll give you the example of that in Bessa. Okay, let's just move on. Um, we'll get her the handouts, please. You tell her sister, her sister to work on that. Now, um, Then we said, um, there are 
occultic codes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Codes of uh, operational codes mm -hmm. of witchcraft, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we said the first one is what? The double slayer, double of, destiny. slayer of destiny. Okay, now who can quickly tell us in a minute what double slayer of so that our sister can have an overview pending when she gets the handout. Now you may wonder why are we doing this now? Because the truth of the matter is what makes a good teacher is when people can understand. Because now she can't come all this way and not get what we're saying. I would say let's just move on because no no. Even God said will not even like the idea. So, what did you say the double slayer of destiny is? Operational code, double slayer of destiny. With you are talking to her, I hope, so that she can... Okay. She says, yes, so don't rush it. Okay. We mentioned that the agent of darkness that uses this code like to um, dwell within the pool of probabilities, whereas they are prompted to uh, manifest the malevolent aspect okay. of a person's let me, life. Let me explain to her on that. The double layer of destiny, the whole idea, what he's trying to explain is that in every man's destiny, every man's destiny is dependent on two aspects. Yeah. Actually, three. Okay, but we'll talk about that. We will not tell you the third one. Let's say this is a man's destiny. Let's say this is destiny. Are you following, madam? Let's say this is destiny. If every person's destiny, like we said, is actually divided into three, but we only to them two. Okay. But let's just tell you everything so that they can also get everything. Every person's destiny is divided into three. You understand? <clears throat> Let me not use these arrows. Let me not do it this way. Let me see if I can still remember our Venn diagram. I want to use Venn diagram to explain it. I think Venn diagram is like this. Yeah, that's, that's exactly we drew it like yeah, that for you. Okay. Now, okay. Um, okay. Now, this is the malevolent. Malevolent. This is the benevolent. The malevolent aspect and the benevolent aspect. Okay, this is the absolute. So the malevolent aspect, ASP, I hope you understand that. Yes, sir. Can you all see it? Yes, sir. Then this is the benevolent aspect. Then this is the absolute aspect. Now, I'm glad it's like this. Now, the double slayer of destiny is a witchcraft operation that require, that can be set in motion by the choices. of volition the victim makes. The person is not a victim yet, but the choices they make, you understand? Yes. <laughs> Let's see now, which is? Oh, okay. Now, let's say you have Mr. A. Now, there's something we need to explain to you, madam, that we didn't say. There's what you call, there's a universal principle called astra legal right. 
This is what witches, any witch or wizard, any occult, all over the world, this is what they depend on before they attack. And astral legal rights simply means because you did this is the reason why I'm doing that. That means, for instance, now, let's say unknown to you, you have a witch or a wizard around you or an agent of darkness who asks you for some money. And even at that period, you were kind of financially committed, doing something. And so because of that, you were not able to, you told the person, well, I don't really have money, you know. Even if you said it in a nice way or something, the person said, okay. You refused to give me money when I needed your help. Now, that automatically becomes an astral right for them to attack. Now, if you are saying, but I told him the truth, I didn't have money. What makes an astral right very potent for the forces of darkness is that these forces of darkness, we may think they are not educated in scriptures. They don't know the things in the Bible, even the witches in the village. They know of um, what God, what the prophets, including Jesus, what he has said Christians, God's children should do. For instance, Jesus said, whoever come asking you for a loan, in Matthew chapter 5, he says, do not turn back empty. So even if you don't have the full, still say, well, hold this one, and <laughs> this is what I have. Jesus said, whoever comes to borrow from you, give them. Now, you may say, Jesus, but well, what if I don't have? Jesus does not expect you not to have. Jesus said, anyone who borrows, anyone who comes asking you for something, do not turn them back. Don't. And so when you told the person you don't have money now, as far as they are concerned, you have broken the words of Jesus. So that gives them the astral right to attack you. This is the reason why a lot of Christians suffer attack. This is the reason. So an astral legal right becomes very, very potent because they know, the forces of darkness know that you have just broken scriptures. So, let's say somebody did you evil and everybody knows this person is the acclaimed, wicked, witch or wizard attacking you. And then the person now comes tomorrow for assistance. And you say, are you not the one that attacked me? I will never give you anything, God forbid, this and that. That's what they wanted. They deliberately came to ask you because they know you won't forgive them. That gives them an astral right to retaliate. Because now, this was the reason why Jesus could even say to the Father, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Because even the, the more Jesus was talking, the more, even when Jesus was on, on the cross, the, the witches and wizards around there were looking for every opportunity again to still see why Jesus should be further condemned. In debt. There were reasons. <clears throat> okay, fine. Also, okay, maybe one, maybe one will get to the area of prolonged pregnancy where you can see a woman's pregnancy prolonged. There's a witchcraft code behind it. Again, astral right is behind this. So uh, nothing happens for no reason. So sometimes you can see. Um, Okay, you were the one who brought a friend one time. Yeah. That, yeah. that, yes, that we prayed for. Yes. Yeah, yeah. When she was there, we, the Lord revealed it to us, and we told that this is the reason. See, there was an astral right why she was being attacked. And she was surprised. She said, it's true, I know that. And that's why we now prayed, and then the Lord delivered her. You understand? So the thing is, there's always an astral right for these operations. To go into effects. Except God tells you, don't give this person money. He does that to me. He can say, this person, don't give this person money, but this one, give this one money. And we told you, anytime you give money to someone, even if the person is a wicked person, you should always say what? The peace of the Lord. You see, that remark, the Roman Catholics, a lot of them make it, but they don't know what they are saying. That's the most 
powerful remark that can destroy any witchcraft attack. The peace of the Lord be with you. Because Jesus said, when the peace of the Lord, when you come into a place and you say the peace of the Lord be with you, if the person has the peace of the Lord, your peace will remain. If the peace of the Lord is not with the person, Jesus said the peace will return back to you. So, which means if you give somebody money, maybe they call you from the village and ask you for money, and you know these people are evil people. You say, as, as I send this money, I release the peace of the Lord, because Jesus says, whosoever asks, I should not turn them away empty. So I have to give them money. Say, but as I send this money, I release the peace of the Lord upon it. They can never use it for evil. But people don't know how powerful that remark is. But some people today, like the Roman Catholic, a lot of members say it like a cliche, but it is more than that. It's, that remark destroys a lot of occultic attack. Of course, we're trying to just refresh us. Some of you now, we are even forgotten. That's why we're refreshing you now. So. Okay, so. Um, if you are waiting, why didn't we just, let's just move on to the next one. We can't move on to the next one. No, the next one doesn't cost. You know, if I choose not to tell you, you won't know. So <laughs> you better be patient. And by the way, also to, like we've told them, if you eat, if you eat food, don't go to bed immediately. At least you stay, you sit for like one hour, 30 minutes before you sleep. Because if you eat and just go to bed like that, they can attack you. So any food you eat, any food that has elements of nature. In fact, one thing we didn't even tell you is that the reason why uh, when you eat, you don't go to bed instantly, you stay for one hour, 30 minutes, is because whatever you ate went through fire, has these three elements, fire or water. And then air, because when you open your mouth, air. We're, we're going to talk about the ten gates into the kingdoms of darkness. That's why you sit and wait for one hour. At, at most, it should be three hours before you go to bed, but at the least, one hour, 30 minutes before you go to bed. Okay. Now, back to the double slayer of destiny. We only told our folks here these two, but we didn't tell them about this one. Now, in the double slayer of destiny, there's what you call the manivolent. The manivolent is the bad side of a man's destiny. The benevolent, of course, when something is benevolent, favor, goodness. Okay. Now, before we talk about the absolute, let me, let's explain this. We said if you have Mr. A, for instance, Mr. A, Maybe witches have decided they want to attack this Mr. A. Look at him, Mr. A. If witches have decided to attack him, they can use an agent, a blind witch that is a friend or an agent. And he says, let's go and smoke marijuana. So they go and smoke marijuana. And this one does not smoke. He has never smoked marijuana before. But because this one now, which is have marked him to this, marked him to destroy him, this is friend takes him. They go to smoke marijuana, and the first draw of that marijuana, his brain scattered. He now became mad. Yes. Now this is it. You see, this this attack. You see, the madness now is the manivolent aspect of his destiny. We should never have occurred, but because of his what? Choice. Choice to follow his friend. Or his volition to follow his friend. So imagine if he had not followed his friend. Or let's suppose he followed his friend and refused to take the draw. Do you understand? Everything still would have been fine. Do you understand? That's just one area because the witches have planned to destroy him using marijuana, for instance. It can be something else. A, a lady can follow a friend to a party. In that house, uh, robbers came and killed people and killed the person. But
but the sister made the choice to go. Do you understand? So it can come in different shades. Just like the way to, you can make a choice and help someone and show kindness and activate the benevolent aspect. Now, you see, me, me now, right, trying to refresh you now of what we've been teaching them for weeks. Do you understand? It's my volition, even though the Spirit of the Lord wants me to do it. Do you understand? By trying to refresh you now, even if others may say, well, why is he taking us back now? But by me trying to do that, I've activated the benevolence. So I can finish this now. Somebody walks in and just give me an envelope. I say, brother, see, take. God laid it in my heart to give you this and all that. See, I've activated the benevolence. So when you show an act of kindness and all that, even helping the helpless, it's, it's activating the benevolent aspect. Now, you see this circle now, which is the, this third circle now, which is the absolute. You see, it's overlapping into the manivolent and also in the benevolent. What that simply means is that under the as absolute aspect of a man's destiny, there are certain things that will never change, no matter the choices the person makes. For instance, if you look at this, it can be absolute. Under, still under the absolute, there can be an absolute manivolent aspect. You see that? This, is, this circle is absolute. I hope you know. Yes, Please answer. Yes, sir. Sir. This circle is absolute, yes, right? Sir. But if you notice, this absolute circle overlapped into what? The manivolent. manivolent. So there's what you call the manivolent absolute aspect. And then you have the word benevolent absolute aspect. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Now, what this simply means is that let's say this person, this person under this absolute aspect this absolute aspect for this Mr. A, let's use Mr. A again. Let's say in his absolute aspect of his destiny, he was supposed to be a millionaire. Right? So, it is already certain. It is destined for him to be a millionaire. No matter the choices he makes, anything he does works, money comes. It's absolute. God has destined it for him. But in this absolute destiny, where he's a millionaire, he has also made some choices that has given him a mental problem. So this manivolent aspect of Mr. A now has become what? Having a mental problem. But it is, he is absolutely a millionaire, but he has a mental challenge. <laughs> do, do you understand? <laughs> he, he <clears throat> but, but I hope you understand. Yes, yes, I do. Sometimes he's nice, sometimes he just reacts. Do you understand? Like King Saul, his choices by not being God brought him into the manivolent as, absolute aspect yes, of his destiny. Where sometimes he will behave like somebody with a mental problem. Yes, and then also, there is the, because of the choice this man still made, there is the benevolent aspect of his destiny. Meanwhile, being a millionaire is still finally absolute. Whether he pays tight, he gives off, whatever, whatever, no, he is destined to be a millionaire. Money keeps coming. But maybe because of maybe one kind act of kindness he made by choice, he met a woman. And so maybe it could be his marriage here that he's enjoying the benevolence of a good marriage. Although he had some mental challenges, but he married a good woman. Do you understand? And you, the lady cannot explain why she's with him. She just loves him. She says, forget his madness. I love him. 
Do you understand? Wait, well, now you look funny now. Do you understand? Yes, sir. But there's still this aspect. Although by the message of God, he can be delivered. He just needs to stop smoking marijuana. This is where you have addiction. The malevolent absolute. Mm. And if it's by the power of witchcraft, the person can be delivered from it. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I hope you get what we're saying now. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so there are some parts of your life that are absolute. Mm. Do you understand? And there are some people, everything about this absolute is just malevolent. Mm. Nothing works at all. <laughs> everything is bad. That's where poverty comes in. <laughs> it's too terrible. Do you understand? That's why when I look at my biological father till he died, it just looks like the manivolent really took a hold of his life. At least a major part of him. Because he was so broke and busted, poor. Things were not working for him, except serving God. And he served God till he died. But he didn't have. That's why, like I said, I had to join the fraternity to pay school fees. Okay, so, now, all these, all these three aspects, they are under what you call the pool of probability. Probability of what? Destiny. Now you understand why it is called the pool of probability, because all these things are dependent on what? The two major aspects, the malevolent and the benevolent, are dependent on what? Choices. So the choices is why it's called what? Probability. So God, the, which, the forces of darkness know this is how God created a man's destiny. You understand? Jesus had an absolute destiny to be a king. That's why he's still coming again. The absolute must be fulfilled. That's why you can see some people. Since this is the school of metaphysics, we will look at the, the beauty of reincarnation. You know, some people, they have to come again to fulfill, particularly if something was in their absolute. Okay. Then, um, so, but a lot of, what we just explained now, a lot of Christians don't know this. So you can see a pastor says, I don't know why my ministry is not going. I tried to put things, you know, things are not working. Well, maybe because of a choice. And maybe there's a malevolent aspect. Like our Papa, Papa Joshua Aguila, the ministry closed down 11 times because the forces of darkness were attacking, right? Yes. But it was in our Papa's absolute destiny to be who he is today. It was already absolute for him. Do you understand? But God allowed the forces of dark, the malevolent aspect to happen. So the ministry was closed down 11 times. And in 13 years, now the ministry is worldwide. So the success of the ministry now, because if the ministry was closed down 11 times, I will tell you the success is phenomenal in 13 years. Okay, why? Because there was already an absolute destiny for our Papa. Even before he was born. Okay, so the benevolent and the absolute. The benevolent aspect has moved into the absolute. That's why it can't go down. can't happen again. But there were occasions where it looks like the, the, the malevolent took preeminence for a while. And it looked like it was absolute. See that? I hope you get that now. Yes, but these are principles. Now, what we just told you now, a lot of Christians don't know that a man's destiny is split into three sides. But the forces of darkness already know. All they just want to do is they can study, and which is they take time to study their victim before they attack. They know what the person likes, where the person likes to go to, what the person likes to eat. They know, they take time. They are well informed about the person. And there are forces of darkness, spirits, to aid them with the accurate information about their victim, their prospective victim, before they launch the attack. 
So through what they know the person likes and what the, where the person likes to go to, they can use that now, bam, pull the person's choice. So that's why it can be through a best friend. It can be through, you know, some other means. But Christians don't know these things. Okay. So that's an overview of um, double slayer of destiny. What's the second one? What? Okay. Okay, go ahead, say it. You have the mic there, say it. Yes, we did, you did also mention that in order to access information as well, an, an agent of darkness can project into someone's body and live there. Yes. And, and that's also the cause for having boil. Boys, boys. yes. So whenever yeah. you see someone... There are some people with strange boys. And boys... Um, yeah. People with boys, you know, consistently, you see some people, they have boys, body swollen, boys. It just means, those are the residues of witchcraft projection. It means that uh, a witch entered the person's body and stayed there for some days, at most 10 days, and then finally left. And when they left, the result of the departure of that witch from the person's body is what causes boils in the person's body. So, see, in, in this school, you are getting to see that nothing happens for nothing. There's a reason. There's a mechanics behind everything. See that? Yeah, we're well, glad we brought that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. But did I bring that up on that double slayer of destiny? <laughs> this guy, have fun. It's not on that double slayer. What we just said now concerning the boys is not on that double slayer. Relax, yes. Relax, yes. The point, yeah, go ahead. Give her the mic then. Go ahead, man. Midnight is fearful. It's talking about um, this one. According to what we learn uh, from this class, it shows that uh, when this um, attack is launched, okay. it can happen at any time. Okay. So let's start again. Okay. Midnight is fearful, yes. Midnight is fearful. Yes. No, just okay. It's when the, the attack is launched. When it's launched, it can happen, uh, it, it can happen at any time. It's not only in the night. And another thing about the midnight is fearful is that, um, is that it has the virtual books. The virtual books? That virtual book, okay. once it's uh, used, the, the, the end result is death. Okay. There's another one called me. Uh, me, me. No, okay, me. Okay. okay. How, how is everything? How is your hand? Yeah, I'm sorry, you're free in Jesus' name. The gamma mat. The gamma okay. Mat. Not Ghana, gamma mat. Gamma <laughs> okay. Mat. okay, okay. I'm glad. This you. One Okay. And um, from there we talk about uh, the one about uh, what is it? Uh, okay. Okay. We'll talk. We'll talk about that. Thank you. Thank you. Midnight is fearful. Is an operational witchcraft code that um, is done by the Abrameli witchcraft. God bless you, ma. The Abrameli witchcraft do this a lot. And the Ab Abrameli witchcraft, Abrameli, M-E-R-L-I-N, the Abrameli witchcraft is the most dangerous out of the five kinds of witchcraft. They are the ones responsible for midnight is fearful. And the reason why it is caught so is because although they can operate any time of the day, but primarily at night, 
<clears throat> Under Midnight is Fearful, you have what you call in beating, in pity me. In pity me is known as the stones of death. Stones of death. That they can use to hit the person. And the person can die in their sleep. Or you must have heard some people just have like a sudden headache. Mm -hmm. And then they say he die of headache. One sharp pain like that, or one part of the body. In quitting me, it's responsible. It means that they stone the person with the stones of death. In quitting me, it's called the stones of death. Spell that in quitting me again. Let me be correct with the spelling. MKP. Okay, MK. MKPIT. IMME. Okay. In pity me. It's known as the stones of death. Then the next one is called the gamma mat. Spelled gamma. G -A -M -M -A. Yeah, gamma mat. Mat. This is the one they use to cover someone mm -hmm. when asleep. So you hear that the person died in their sleep. You understand? We may want to call that a glorious death, but if you look at it carefully, did the person really finish what they were supposed to do on it? Then it means that midnight is fearful. The, this witchcraft code is what killed that person. And this was the instrument they used, the gamma mat. That means it's a mat, it's like a piece of cloth, actually. They used to cover the person while asleep. And that is why sleeping too much is dangerous. We said somebody should not sleep more than what? Three hours, more than six hours. But the least, at least, at the most, three hours is okay. You understand? But full stretch, six hours to eight hours, that's too dangerous. But even within that six hours, there should be a break. You understand? Then the third one, Evangelism. Evangelism these were the things Evangelism was talking about. Then the third one is what you call Vicious, eh? The what? Let me explain. The third one is is vicious astral poisons. Vicious astral. So if we give you a test now, you will not even get it accurately the way we're giving you. Vicious astral poison. On that vicious astral poison, you have the votra boat. We mentioned other kinds of astral poison. Didn't we give you another one? It's what you call the vicious astral poison. Yes, sir. There are different kinds. And we said the most vicious of them is the Votra boat. Yes. The Votra boat astral poison. Mm -hmm. This Votra boat is the most vicious. The most vicious of all the poison. We said there are different kinds. We mentioned some other names. But um, this Votra boot, the reason why we decided to just focus on this one is the most dangerous. This one is, there's just only a one-way ticket. Mm -hmm. The ticket is dead mm -hmm. on both sides. It's either it kills the victim or it kills the sender. Once the Votra boot has been released, it is either of these two. It, it, it must kill someone. It must either kill the sender or the victim. That's one thing about the Votra boat. And we said the Votra boat is a leaf. It's a kind of leaf. Yes, leaf. Leaf. L-E-A-F. Leaf. Or leaf, right? Yes, leaf from branch of a tree. Yes, 
is a particular kind of leaf. And we said the Votra boat astral poison is even grandmasters, ardent masters, um, they don't like to, no, ma even if you give them millions of dollars to come and release a Votra boat, <laughs> they'll tell you they don't want to do it. Because it's, a, it's, it's either of these two. Two edges sword. Is either he kills the victim or he kills the sender. And it has destroyed many senders than even the victims. Because to succeed with the Votra boat in killing a victim is, a, is an automatic promotion to a higher seal. Automatic. In fact, it can move you into the fourth or the fifth seal automatically. Because it's part of your resume to say, look, I've been able to successfully dispense the Votra boat and I kid. And they can't lie. In the old court, one thing we said, they don't lie. They don't lie. Because you can't lie, they say everything. It is only in the, in the church circle that you can see a member lie to a pastor or this and that. But in the old court, they don't lie to each other. They tell the truth. They don't lie. Because you can't lie. They say everything. It is Christians that think God does not see all angels or the minister. This voter boat, the success already, if somebody is in the third lower levels of the destructive sea and launches a voter boat and succeeds, he can automatically come into the fifth sea. Because only a few people have succeeded with the voter boat. Because to release a voter boat, Astra poison. If you are sending a Votra boat Astra poison to a victim, not you now, if somebody is releasing a Votra boat Astra poison to a victim, number one, the person they are sending that Votra boat to, that, in that environment, they must not have mentioned the name of Jesus for like a month. So, which means whoever wants to release that vote trouble must have scanned through and see, know that the people in that environment have not mentioned the name of Jesus for like a month. Yes. We're even talking about even that environment. That's one. Then secondly, A Votra boat will not work where you have a cat or a dog barking. Where a cat cries or a dog barking. So if the person has a dog or a cat, a Votra boat can't work. Because these are the two animals, these are the only two animals who have the eyes to see a Votra boat coming. These are the only two animals. Okay. And the Votra boat, it can come like a pinch. On a, once it is released on the victim, it can hit the person like a pinch, a small, tiny pinch. So you will not think much of it. Then the next thing, the person dies. That's what we tell people. Even when you feel a pinch, say, free in the name of Jesus. Yeah, you know, because it can come like a dot. Okay. So, Votra boat cannot work where you have a cat crying or where a dog is back because they can see it and send it back. Now, we said one of the ways to physically see a Votra boat coming is to see it. You see, you see this thing we call falling stars, shooting stars. When you look at the sky and you see a star falling, and you hear people say, make a wish. So when you hear, you see shooting stars, and you see two lovers, and they say, make a wish, hold on to them. 
that shooting star, that falling star, is actually a voter vote. Yeah. 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 See, that's, that's why there's too much love in Jamaica. <laughs> okay. And we said when the voter vote is about to be released, the the person who wants to send the voter vote must go to an open field mm -hmm. in the midnight mm -hmm. and must be stark naked. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then must carry two mortars. Mm -hmm. You know mortar? Yes, and then mm -hmm. we'll turn one upside down and sit on it. Mm -hmm. And then and then put the leaf where in the mortar and pound it. And then once it turns to powder, they will scoop it with what? The left hand. The left hand. Is that it? Then they put their right hand on their chest. And then do what? Call the person. And then tell the person, because you did this thing, that's why I'm sending you this. And then blow it into the air. Right? And then the person will not bring the hand back. After blowing into the air, the person must not stand up from that mortar. Mm -hmm. The person must be seated. The person must wait till the voter boat returns. To if the voter boat falls on the ground, it means it succeeded. If it hits the person, the sender, it means it didn't work. You don't know. Really? If they send it, it will go. Forces will carry it to go, and go. no matter where the person is in the world, they are victim. They know the once you call the name and you say this is the reason, they know the person. They will go and hit the person, and once they strike the person, it will return back to the sender and fall on the ground. That means that's how the sender knows the thing has been completed, it succeeded. But if he returns and hits the sender, ah yeah. Back to send her. This is over for the send her. You understand? Back to, exactly. See, now you can understand. Now when we say every arrow fired at me, back to send her, you're actually addressing a voter vote. Do you understand? But the people don't know. They just think, hey, Pastor, just give us a good prayer point. Every arrow back to send her. <laughs> but we know that you're actually talking about what? Voter vote. But when you get the hand out, you can read up on it, you, so that you can. Because now what we're explaining to you, when you see the hand out now, you'll be able to gather it quickly. OK, the, the third one is what? Carriers of heavy, heavy load. That's the first one we even first talked about before you started mentioning double slayers. Carriers of heavy load. Do you want to say something about that? What? The, yes, uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord is my refuge and my... Yeah, that's the victory code against the voter boat. Yes. Yes. So, so even when you quote that Psalm 91, it is simply because of the voter boat. Oh, Daniel 11, verse 32. He said, they that do know their God shall be strong and do explain. Yes, ma'am. Well, she will was, she was still get their hand out. We're just giving. So the third one is what? Carriers of heavy load. This is where you have some people who carry problems, family problems. Only one person. This person is the, the most successful, yet the person is carrying family problem. Without the person, nothing works and all that. Those things happen because say, you see you have money, you will carry problems. <laughs> you understand? Mama is sick. This person is not feeling too well. Every time money comes, that's when one carrier of heavy load. And those things are caused by an astral right. And then a pregnant woman, you can see a woman with prolonged pregnancy. It's 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 caused by the operational code called what? 
carriers, carriers of heavy load. Okay. <clears throat> hmm? We're just listing them. She will get the hand out. We're just listing what we can. We still want to give you one quote today. But if you, if you, so please, see, don't, in, don't stop interrupting us when we explain something. Okay, so carriers of heavy load. In your hand out, this was the one we mentioned first. So that we are not even mentioning it now. You're saying number three should have been. <clears throat> Carriers of heavy load here. Sometimes you see some people, they carry burdens, family burdens. The thing is not going away. And the way the enemy attacks the victim in this area, when it comes to the area of burden, you find the person in the, you find the person they know the person is full of compassion. They know the person does not like to see people suffer. Mm -hmm. But just because the person probably offended maybe an agent of darkness somehow, that's how. And it's not as if they really mean it. We give you an example of a lady who father-in-law asked her for money. Mm -hmm. And then the father-in-law, she said to the father-in-law, Papa, I can't give you money. You go and use your money to... You go and use money to do voodoo. Mm -hmm. And so the father-in-law says, because he's a native doctor. Yeah. And so the daughter-in-law now got pregnant. Now. And I said, this pregnancy, see. So because she laughed at her, she was saying it jokingly. But you see, that became what? An astral legal right for her father-in-law to attack her. It can be any other thing too. So like you see, prolonged pregnancies. Prolonged pregnancy. And then, uh, you see one lady, she's sponsoring all her siblings, all her brother's children. They are all married things, but she herself, she has not focused on herself and all that. It means that she's under this attack. Because the enemy is taking advantage of her compassion, her kindness. You can relate to things like this. You can see it in people's lives. Uh, okay. <laughs> the build house. One person collects it. Okay. What's the other one now? What's the other one? Let's be fast. Let's be fast. What's the other one? Wait, what, what are you for saying? Are you offended or what? No, no, no. Yeah, it was the way Give me one. Which one? Dog that bites, don't laugh. Like we said, she will get the hand out. We're just giving an overview. We've been saying that over and over again. Dog, this one is another operational code. Dog that bites, that bites, don't laugh. Dogs that bite, dogs that bite, or dog that bite, don't laugh. Okay. What does this operational code mean? It's responsible for accidents and death. Hmm? It's responsible for accidents. It's responsible for death. The whole operational code has one primary objective, to destroy the human race by causing death. Yeah, but it's primarily for accidents. How? How is it for accidents? Mm. Yeah. And, um, the primary focus is not necessarily accidents. Did we say accident? No. We said this primary, this operational code is primarily launched against those who have what? Greed. Yes, people who are selfish and greedy, not accidents.
Responsible for what? Did I say accident? Yes, sir. Responsible for accident. How? Give me an example. Okay, by the example would be when I just came to you and I said that um, I, I said a few things where I was going to work and I saw, I saw a dog on my way to work and then I was also a vehicle and I have a Sit down. Man. Dog that bites, actually, is an operational code primarily targeted towards people who are greedy. Yeah. And then people who are selfish, mm -hmm. who only think about. And so the forces of darkness, they like to attack people like that. They can use any platform to attack the person. But primarily, these are their victims. That's just the unique thing about the dog that bites, don't laugh. You want to say something, Sir Shelley? No, sir. I want to say something. OK. So. That's that. The reason why we, I, I disagree when you say I said accident is because the code responsible for accident is what we want to talk about today. That's why, that's why I say I disagree. But if you say I mentioned accident, fine. It just means that the thing is that even if the person dies in an accident, it is, dying in the accident is not necessarily the code. That's something I want, we want you to get. So even if we mention accidents, the person dying by accident is not the code. Dying by accident, so do you understand, is not the code. The code here, the dog that bites, is not for everyone. It's primarily targeted at people who are greedy and selfish. This is the primary reason for this code. This is not dream. So when you were mentioning dream, I don't think I, I don't think I, except I didn't understand your dream very well. But the thing about this code, the dog that bites, is that it is primarily focused on greedy people and selfish people. So whether they die in an accident or not, that dying, the, dying in an accident is not the thing. The thing here is who died. You understand? The person is a greedy person. Mm -hmm. We give you an example. What example did we give? We talked about, um, yeah. we talked about um, one of the examples is that how money is a common instrument. One of the examples that we gave is that money should be careful about these sugar daddies. Sugar daddies and all that. Uh -huh. that yeah, when, like when you find people who have an insatiable appetite for money, yeah. money is a strong instrument here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if you notice, that was the focus. So even the way the person dies is not the thing. The thing here is who is being targeted here. Do you get what we're tell telling you? Maybe we should take a break. You guys should go and refresh yourself. Okay, so, so the thing is not about how the person died. The code we want to talk about, that one is responsible for accidents. That one is responsible. Anyone can die in an accident, anything. Not me, certainly, but things can happen that can, that can result to that. So, okay, maybe he died in an accident. No, dying in that accident um, is not... First of all, if you say die in an accident is dog that bites, don't laugh. No, you are wrong. Do you understand? Because good people too can die in an accident too. But there's a particular witchcraft code responsible for accident. And that's the one I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> And then there's a spirit responsible for accidents. All right. So any other thing again we said on that dog that bite, don't laugh. What other thing again? A person as an image desire to get money and to fraud and to steal. 
Yes. Exactly. So you. So you have to be careful who you are trying to defraud, because you might just be defrauding an agent, a witch or a wizard, and sometimes it can allow you to defraud them. That becomes what an astral legal right to attack. Yes. All right. What's the next one? Just mention one. Devourer of life. Devourer of life from, from inception. This is where we talk about Abiku Ogbanje, right? Reincarnations. So who can tell us what we said? This operation operates from that the cry of of a mother over a dead baby is music to the ears of witches. It brings joy. So when you see a woman gives birth and then the child dies, and we said the child, a child who is under, what happened is that the reason why this is so is because the mother of the child, before she became pregnant, went to seek spiritual help, unknown to her, in an occult center. Sometimes a sister can say she's believing the love for the fruit of the womb. A friend says, there's one prayer house, let's go. There's one man of God, but you don't know which spirit follows the man of God. Maybe he gave her water to drink, gave her something. But again, there's nothing wrong with those things if the man of God is of the spirit of the living God. But if the person is of the corridors of darkness, that drinking or whatever that lady took opened the canal for an astral spirit, an occult spirit, to enter the woman's womb. Because the woman produces the body. And so the spirit just wears the body grows in the woman's womb. The woman gives birth to the child. But we said that child, if that child is under this, which is, of course, the child is conscious of who they are. If that child, <coughs> if that child is a witchcraft spirit, that child, or children who are victims to this, must not exceed five years, must not live past five years. They don't live past five years old. Because once they cross the line of five years, even a day, maybe on their fifth birthday, and live to see the next day, pam, they can't die again. But a child that is born, that plays, grows up, once the child crosses, Reaches even before it gets to the fifth year, must die if he's under this, except by supernatural intervention. Then again, you know, this uh, a lot of women who are believing God for the fruit of the womb. One thing they don't know is that something we didn't say even here, too. So you see, even refreshing this. Is making us add some things we didn't tell you before. And that thing is this. As a lady, learn to be kind. Learn to be kind. You see, when you see some women give birth to certain children, and it looks like this woman, she's a very nice woman. How can she give birth to a terrible child like this? It's not a mistake. That woman was not a nice woman from the beginning. She was not nice. She was mean. She may have later become nice, but that's not the reason why she gave birth to a terrible child. If you check her story, she was not good. She was mean. 
And so good babies, what people don't know is that babies are alive before they are conceived. They can see who their mothers will be. So there are some people, the child can reject, good children, good babies can reject a woman. And then this thing again, provision. That's what I would tell some of you, the way you manage things. Provision. A child can see that this family don't have. Except some children who, who have been promised, told by the Lord, that the absolute aspect of their destiny is a glorious one. So no matter where they are born, like for me now, I was born in Oshodi, Lagos. But there was already an absolute decree over my life. And given the kind of circumstances my upbringing, I never should have made it to. But already, the Lord has already planned it. So that, that's why you can see some children obliged to be born in certain conditions, given the fact that there's an absolute aspect. But there are some mm -mm, that say, Lord, they don't want this woman. No. Provision, provision, food in the house. It's very, very important. It invites babies. Provision. Kindness. Some ladies even in the, some ladies don't know that babies, the babies that will come to them, watch them when they are single. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. Babies, babies will watch them when they are single. Mm -hmm. said, this lady is nasty. She holds grudge. She's too bitter. She's angry. So they can repair. She's not nice. She likes to hurt things. The children can reject. And they can make a man not marry a woman. They can say, we like you. We like you to be our father, but not to this woman. So they can, children too, in this spirit, they can scatter that relationship. <clears throat> but someday we'll discuss that under a different heading. The order of life from inception is what you call Ubanje, where the person dies, the baby is born and dies. Either instantly or lives getting close to five years and dies. The order of life from inception, when a baby dies like that, we said there are two things a woman must do to put a stop to it. To put a stop to this kind of witchcraft operation is not prayer. Mm -hmm. You don't need prayer. We say when the baby dies, the woman should not go near the corpse. Mm -hmm. Should not go near the corpse. And then the second thing she should not do is to cry. Don't cry. Because the tears, the tears is the reason why the whole thing happened in the first place. The forces, it means that the woman is under attack and the forces who are attacking her want to see her cry. Because that's what they really want. That's the reason for the pregnancy. That's the reason for everything. So once they see the woman is not crying and she did not go near the cops, they can't attack her again. The next time she conceives, she will give birth normally. And they can't hold her womb. But it's something people don't know. So when they see, that's when even... What we just told you now is what many women will not do. Because, of course, a child who dies, my baby, cry. And that's what the forces of darkness want. So don't give them what they want. Say, I know you want to see me cry. I'm not going to cry. Now, what if a minister prays for that baby to wake up? It just means that the real life, the original life that the baby was supposed to have, has just entered the body. Because the force of darkness pushed that life away and a spirit entered. That's why. And the reason why the woman should not cry is because it was even an evil spirit that was inside the baby in the, child, in the first place. So you can't be crying for an evil spirit. That's what they want. That's why you say don't cry and don't go near the body. So when God says my children are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, these are things people don't know. Okay. 
Any other thing again to add here? Okay, the next one, the next one, quickly. Because we want to leave by, we want to stop by three. So that, if possible, we can tell you what we wanted to tell you. But we're good that we're taking Madame along. So that, even if we don't tell you what we wanted to tell you today, in our next class, we'll be able to carry everybody along. What's the next one? Blood that goes for blood. 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 This is another operational witchcraft operational code. And blood that goes for blood means that the witches, they use blind witches here. Of course, there are conscious witches they also use here too, but they use more often than not blind witches. And blood that goes for blood is, an, is a witchcraft operation where you have terrorists, mm -hmm. armed robbers, uh, kidnappers, ritualists, all those people. And what they do is that um, even rapists, we talked about rapists too. Yeah. Did we ever tell you having sex in the dream means, you know, people think that having sex in the dream is spirit husband and spirit wife. Having sex in the dream just simply means the interpretation to that dream is there's a spirit that wants to suck the person's blood. Yes. Sexual intercourse in the dream is a person's blood. It just means that they took the person's blood. That's just all it means. So when you hear some people give you interpretation that it means the person has spirit husband, spirit wife, it's not all that. That they even want you to even say that. Sir. But the real reason is because of the person's blood. They need the person's blood for transmogrification. Yeah. We've told you that before. Yeah. Where a spirit can change into different forms, mm -hmm. different images, primary and the secondary image. Okay. Now, when they say blood, that goes for blood, here they are looking at a blind witch here, somebody they want to use to cause mass destruction. Yes, like a terrorist now. Do you understand? So that they can have what? Collective blood. For what? For the collective astral forces of darkness. Okay. <clears throat> when somebody wants to be a suicide bomber or a terrorist to, be, to cause mass death, already they have already decided that that person they are going to use is already what they call a wasted blood. We told you that now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The person is already what? A wasted blood. It's a blood to be wasted. So they will use that person to what? Gather more blood for their what? For their blood bank in the astral chambers. And that's what, what? These forces feed on. You understand? When we say astral, we mean what? Operations of the air. You see this? Uh, Killings, mass killings, and all that. It is spirit in the air, not spirit in the earth. Spirit in the air. Astral forces, they are the ones responsible for when you see a mass killing. Like that explosion now that took place in Lebanon, astral forces are behind it. Even though you may want to give a biological explanation to it, but astral forces, that's blood that goes for blood at work. World Trade Center is blood. This was the operational code that took place, blood that goes for blood. So that they can gather more blood in the blood bank. Astral forces were behind that one. Okay. The one we wanted to talk about today is this one called, so that I will just give it to you and then dismiss. The one I wanted to give it, have we, which other one again did we not talk about? Yeah. 
The, have we talked about the destroyer of favor? Eh? Dry leaves are over just means a woman who cannot have children. She, she will never have children because of what she did. Again, it can come in two ways. Which one here did we talk about? Uh, like now, dog that bites don't laugh, right? We said it's primarily targeted towards greedy people, people who have quest for money. Uh -huh. And um, a dry leaf now, eh? That's the one we want to talk about now. That's what I want to talk about. The mighty powers of great illusion. We've already talked about that one. The mighty powers. Okay, okay. Let, let me talk about. Let, let me just talk about this one. Then we'll talk. We'll talk about mighty powers of great illusion. Uh, let's just give you the mighty powers of great illusion. It's a, the mighty power of great illusion. It's a witchcraft operation. <coughs> that makes the person see, hallucinate, that makes the person hallucinate. Where the person can, you can see somebody running on the street, say, they are coming, they are coming, they are chasing me. I keep seeing people trying to attack me. Hey, hey, you begin to wonder. That, that's a witchcraft operation called the mighty power of great illusion. Mm -hmm. Now, that one of seeing dog running after the person, trying to bite the person, do you understand? In the dream, is also mighty power of great illusion. That's how we say I disagree when you say the dog that bites don't laugh when you see dog in the dream. No, I disagree. It's under mighty power of great illusion. Not necessarily every animal, but vicious one. So you see now, you see now, he's generalizing. You see, brother, you said all the animal. No, 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 vicious animals. Vicious animals. Uh, that's why I said, I can't believe I said that. I said, a underdog that bites his dog pursuing you. I didn't say that. You presumed it because you saw dog. No, you presumed it. Just, I didn't say, personally, one or one. Uh -huh, not in the class. Maybe, no, I, no, that means I was, not, I was not even paying you attention. I was busy doing something. Because I couldn't have said that. There are occasions where somebody can be talking to me and may not be paying attention, either because I'm thinking about something or the Lord is communicating or is showing me something. Do you understand? Or something I just don't want to hear. Because <laughs> this, this might be for after preaching like this, that's when they want to start asking. It's good when we talk like this. Do you understand? After class. I like it. But like when I'm in the car, I want to play music. That's when you now want to ask me questions. And the Lord now will not tell me, listen to them. Lord, I just want to. Exactly. Because when I get home, my folks know, I don't like to discuss anything in church. When I'm at home, I don't like to discuss anything in church. Except I initiate it. But trying to bring me information. Okay, so. So we will address the mighty power of great illusion. When you see these people now in... Um, Mental homes. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Uh, yeah. People, psych, psych wards, all those things. It's this thing that is at work. See, see why medications can't fix it? The mighty power of great illusion. That's what is at work. They do mention depression. Well, don't be depressed. Just avoid it. Depression, that's why, again, this thing, we said, um, we have told you before, not even in this class, but in the course of teaching. Personally, I don't like moody women around me. I don't like any moody. He's, you hardly find a man who is moody. But I don't, personally, I don't like moody women because a moody woman is a strong potential agent. Is a strong potential candidate to be a blind witch. Mm. Can use that person to attack you. Because moodiness already opens the gate, bam, already for forces to enter. Yeah, don't bring it here, holy ghost fire on your head. <laughs> so decide, as you go, no more moodiness. No more moodiness. And then you tell 
Say, I'm just going through my mood. Don't bring it here. <laughs> okay. So we've settled that mighty power of great illusion. Okay, blood suckers. Blood suckers is the one we wanted to talk about today. Okay, but it's a good thing. See, now with all this, now we can all flow. See, it's already three o'clock. Blood suckers. Blood suckers, let me just give you quickly what this one means. It's an operational witchcraft code that looks similar to, to blood that goes for blood. This one is also responsible for killings, deaths. But the deaths is for a specific high spirit, specific high witchcraft spirits. Now, listen carefully. This blood that goes for blood, we said the instruments they use are all terrorists, all those people. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. The blood, the, the blood that they use their agents here to gather is to feed all the spirits of darkness. Wow. Do you understand? Wow. Yes, Amen. 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 Let's close. You are not answering now. But for these blood suckers, this one, it is to also launch an attack, but the blood that they are gathering is for certain specific high spirits. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Those ones want their own special blood. You understand? Yes, sir. That's where this operational code comes into um, it comes into play. Amen. Amen. Okay. There are three reasons for this attack. Do you mind if I clean this? Yes, sir. There are three reasons why this attack can be launched. Why this operational code can be launched? One, when you offend, when you offend a witch or wizard. Of course, every all the operational codes too uh, are launched when certain things are when certain forces. Uh, under offense. But when you offend a witch or wizard, that's number one. Number two, when you are in love with a witch or a wizard, madly, unapolog unapologetically, crazily in love, ooh, Do you understand? Are you getting this? Yes, sir. <laughs> and then lost. Lost is the third one. Okay, let's just put this way. This is number two, emotional attachment to a wish. You understand what I mean? Emotional yes, yes. attachment. Let's not use the word falling in love. Now correct it now. Emo emotional attachment to a witch. Before you now say you said love, I like that one. <laughs> emotional attachment. You can be emotionally attached to someone, not necessarily being in love with the person. I mean, who is not emotionally attached to their mother? Biological mother. Amen, 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 amen. And then they are more than unknown to them is a strong, powerful witch. So, yeah. so it can be the reason for why, why the person's blood, certain high spirits need that person's blood. Because the person is already emotionally attached to. So again, you need to be careful who you are emotionally attached to. Number three, when you are 
when you have cravings, when you lust for material things, mundane things, when you have uncontrollable lust, when you lust for mundane things, material things, to lust, L-U-S-T, I hope you know. To lust for material or mundane. You know what mundane means? Ordinary things. Okay. Things without value, exactly. But the person is pursuing those things. Oh, seriously. So these are the primary reasons why all these things happen. <coughs> Let's give an example here, when you offend a witch. There was a pastor uh, who had, unknown to him, a member who happens to be a witch. And so he was reprimanding her about the way she dressed, her dressing. And so she, of course, reacted. And so the pastor went as far as slapping the lady. Wow. And then the lady said, you slap me, you slap me, you will see. The pastor said, what can you do? Mm -hmm. But see, already, the very fact that the pastor slapped the member. Mm -hmm. see, it's, it, see, for us as ministers, you can only talk to a member. But in terms of physically hitting the member, it's not right. But you see, by him doing that, he has already broken a code. Remember, Jesus said, if anyone strikes you on your right, uh, turn the other side. But he, with what he did, he has lost the backing of the Lord. So that's why we say witches, they just want to see you break the word of the Lord or an instruction a prophet gives you. Um, like on Wednesday when our papa had issued the secular that all churches must be holding services on Thursdays instead of Wednesdays, even for us to still hold service this last Wednesday, we still had to seek his permission. Because that could be a basis where forces can attack. Say you disobeyed the word of your superior, your father. So we had to seek his permission. So he said, okay, fine, go ahead and hold service. And so after the service, we still had the privilege to talk to him. So we began to explain to him about the time zone and that we will not miss services. We'll still say, okay, fine, so you can be holding Wednesday services then. Do you understand? So we're favored, amen. amen. You see, because if that is not, see, it can be as little as that. Supposedly, but the time zone does not affect the, the Nigerian services, so we can still be holding service and all that without talking to the man of God. When the man of God has already given instruction, forces have seen it already. So you still need to seek permission from the superior. And so when a papa says, it's, it's okay, go ahead. And even that even our papa can just say, no problem. Just that one, it has saved you already. Because yes. <laughs> it can be a big problem. You teach us this thing now, why are they attacking you like this? Ah, it's disobedience. So don't give forces of darkness an astral right. Sometimes you may see us, maybe somebody says something, instead of talking back, we maybe keep quiet. Maybe the Lord has just whispered to us, that's the wish. They are, don't give them an astral right because you may say something that would. So, so what did the 
the witch do? She went to the road and put two stones. Put two st struck two stones on the road for the pastor. So as the pastor was traveling from Benin to Lagos, he got to or they had an accident and died. Uh -uh. Specific high spirits needed the blood of that person is anointed. Uh -uh. Blood of the anointed. And the anointing remains even when the person dies. It remained on the bones of Elisha. So, so again, sometimes here, a pastor or a leader, one in the, in the place of influence, should be conscious that. Could be that certain people do, are doing what they are doing because they need certain high spirits after the person's blood. There's a way a sister can make a pastor have sex with her. But the pastor may not know that she's an agent just because her blood. I've been a victim to that before. Can't lie to you. Yeah, man. I only just told the sister, you, you can't use my blood for anything. I said, it won't work. I don't know what you're talking about. I said, I know you know what I'm talking about. I said, but it won't work. Don't work at all, because I don't live by blood. Don't work. See, I look human, but I'm already a dead person. I said, remember I preached one time when I said I had this vision that I was in the casket. So I said, I'm a dead person. So I don't live by blood, but it's just unfortunate this was how you were trying to do it. It don't work. I'm not the kind of person you can do that to look for another person. I don't live by blood. But they can do things like this. For the blood suckers. Amen. Amen. Dry leaves, there's nothing much to explain. There just means a woman who cannot have a child. They, they, have this, they have made a decree. This one can never have children. And sometimes, again, sometimes it could be that the person was supposed to have children it all depends on how they want to attack the woman. You know, there's a way a woman can be, can cheat somebody. And the person will call you cheat. But being a dry leaf comes primarily through sexual intercourse. It matters the kind of man. It, that one is primarily targeted on women. A man cannot be a dry leaf, but a woman can be. Well, but a woman can make a man a dry leaf. Again, it's possible. Where the man has low sperm count. But primarily, the focus is on the woman. Quite frankly, the truth of the matter is that, can we tell you one truth? A woman does not need a man to be pregnant, really. If you study the Bible, you know, people think that Mary's virgin birth was supernatural in the sense that she was the only woman who conceived with, yeah, with the aid of the Holy Spirit and all that. When I studied the Bible, Sarah conceived without Abraham. The Bible says she received strength to conceive. She received strength by her feet to conceive. This is true feet. Sarah received strength. So Abraham was getting other women pregnant. We couldn't get Sarah pregnant, remember? So it was Sarah's strength by her persuasion, by the word of the Lord, that made her conceive Isaac. So Isaac was not really Abraham's child. He was Sarah's child. He was Sarah's seed because Sarah received strength to conceive him. Hmm? By that time she was very, very old. Old, yes. So maybe God resuscitated everything because when you are old, yes, ma. Uh, yeah, but, but you see, my, the thing is that that's why the Bible says she was fully, faith means persuasion. She was fully persuaded. She said, no, no, I must be pregnant. You understand? She, she later realized that she was the one wasting time. 
Because others were getting pregnant. <laughs> this one here too much. Not going to the hospital for 25 years. Even Abraham said would have been glad. Because Sarah, Sarah was a handful. <laughs> and then he, can't you see he gave her away twice? Abraham said, this beauty is a travel. This beautiful woman, this long legs, this, forget to, this shakwa. <laughs> Sarah. Sarah is worse than tattoo. Okay, so again, that's why you see some. Have you have you not noticed some men who marry certain women? They say, I don't know. It's his brother's wife that is controlling brother. Brother, anytime brother sees his wife, like he's like an idiot. And people can tell the wife is a terrible agent. It means that such a man is under this operational code. We had the wife. The moment he sees his wife, I say, please talk to my wife. Uncle say he will help you. No, 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 no. But the moment he saw his wife, his, his mind twisted. <laughs> this one, his blood, they are sucking it to high spirits. <laughs> yes. Oh. No, the dog that buys is primarily money. Money is the instrument. You understand? Mm. Somebody may want to collect a hundred dollar from you and because of that is ready to do anything to us to get it. But this one here, here, material things we said, mundane things. You understand? Things that don't mean anything, but people have this innate desire to get it. You understand? You understand? So not necessarily. Blessed be God. Have you been blessed, man? Hope you were blessed, man. Amen. How many have we mentioned, have we explained so far now? We told our favor. That's the last one to talk about. We'll talk about that one in our next class, the withholder of favor. Yeah, it just, yeah, of course, going by that, you can see such a person, one thing they do, they never see favor again. Not even from God, not from, oh, we'll discuss that. <clears throat> but that one is solely dependent on the person. There's a way the person can take it, make, make a decision. So, there's a way witchcraft can make somebody lose favor with God. So, so when you now be, with all these things that you are learning now, when you now look at certain Christians, and they begin to tell you, I've been praying to God, I don't know why God doesn't want to answer me, I don't know why. When you look at their situation, when you tell, when you tell somebody, sit down, please, tell me what is really going on. What, what are you really going through in your life? Talk to me. If they'll be honest enough to tell you, this is it, this is it, this is it, you'll be able to pick at least four operational codes in their life. And if you tell them, admit you were at fault, because the person must have been at fault before these things start happening. There's no operational code that does not work in somebody's life if the person is not at fault. Because everything is all, the 10 operational codes are dependent on what? Astral legal rights. You must give them the astral rights to attack. You must. So it could be, so you can see some people, 10 of, 10 of these operational codes are already at work in their lives. Some three, some two. Do you understand? And for the young people, pay attention to uh, the double slayer of destiny, the probability, the pool of probability. That's where a lot of young people are under serious attack because they make careless choices like we've all done in the past. Do you understand? So, so when you sit down, and, and so whoever, those who, who want to be, like you guys now in the church now, uh, if we, if we have like a counseling department, which we would as, the, as we expand, once we have like a counseling department, people like you guys in this school now can counsel people. You can sit down and say, what was really? Okay, then you know the area to pray and target. 
And when I sleep, something comes to press me in the night. Then that means this could be either the stone of death or they are trying to use the force, the gamma mat on this person. See me, that evil mat that they are trying to use. Or you see that witchcraft elephant that is trying to sit on you will destroy you. You can you will know exactly what you are praying. And the person will be free. <clears throat> when somebody is getting married, you're already planning your marriage. That's the most dangerous season of your life. Why? That's the season where you are not supposed to offend anyone. Not even your in-laws, even your brother-in-law, your sister-in-law, your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, don't offend anyone. Even your own parents, don't offend them. Don't offend your aunties. The ones you don't even like that came, don't offend them. Because you don't know who is looking for a basis to destroy that marriage. She so says, look, now that you have, he has engaged you, you are planning to marry, by December, between now and then. Now, during that period, that's the time not to offend anyone. You are planning the marriage and all that. The uncles you don't want to see the most are the ones you satisfy the most in that wedding. Because try as much as possible to satisfy people. The aunties you don't even like, they are the ones you should satisfy them because they are looking for an astral right to scatter the state. <laughs> say, don't be angry. This period, even on the wedding day, ah, say, don't, 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 don't be angry. Don't let anything provoke you. Don't react. Yes. And the man you are marrying, don't discuss him with your best friend. Don't discuss, don't say anything about him to any of your friends. I don't know now. See, now he's delaying. Now. Don't. Just shut up. Whatever you want to tell him, tell him privately. Because that day, not everyone is happy. Oh. Not everyone is happy. Oh. Oh, there's nothing wrong in hosting a big wedding. Yeah, you should celebrate, man. I mean, it's something you desire not to do again. So you should, you should have fun. Although, some of us, by the reason, by the reason of, of some of the kind of experiences we've had, man, some of us will just want something quiet or private, man, because... Yeah, I'll tell you. And it's cheap now. <laughs> it's zoom. <way. laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, oh, see, only goes fire. And yeah, they watch. Amen. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Have you been blessed? Yes, sir. Talk to the Lord. Lord, we bless your name. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the majesty, all the dominion, all the wisdom, all the reverence, and honor. Glory, glory be to your name. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The gates of hell, the gates of wicked and unreasonable men, the gates of traitors and betrayers, and evil works of darkness, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of the age, unfruitfulness, barrenness, generational causes, ill will, ill marriages, ill health, Backwardness and retrogression will never prevail against the students in this class, against us, against this school forevermore. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. So only promoted, Lord, by your spirit. Please change my heart, O oh God. Make it a my heart, oh God, may I be like